welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samas in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरीहर्ति लीलया विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरीहर्ति लीलया in this course we are focusing on three types of samasas avyayi bhava bahuvrihi and dvandva we first understand the overall theory of compounding that is generally applicable to all types of samasas in which we studied the samartha theory this samartha theory is stated explicitly by panini in his own grammar but which is delineated by the commentators on this particular grammar notable amongst them is the text called vyakarana mahabhashya composed by patanjali in 2nd century bce an important chapter in this vyakarana mahabhashya called samarthadhika explains the samartha theory in detail in a nutshell patanjali's arguments can be summed up by saying that patanjali offers four explanations of the word samartha samprekshitartha sambaddhartha sangatartha and samsrashtartha amongst these four samprekshitartha and sambaddhartha explain what is known as interrelation of padas in the sentence also described by patanjali using the technical term vyapeksha so vyapeksha is explained by the two explanations namely sambaddhartha and samprekshitartha and then we have these two interconnected elements merging together to form one unit as the output which is ekarthi bhava as described by patanjali and the explanation of the word samartha in the view of ekarthi bhava is sangatartha or samsrashtartha this was the base of the theory of compounding we also said that sentence is the input for the process of compounding the semantic conditioning in the sentence namely the interrelated padas which are part of the sentence is the input for the process of compounding and the output of the process of compounding is a nominal root also called a pratipadika we then also studied the concepts of nitya samasa and anitya samasa in this process we studied the concept of vigraha 
which is of two types laukika vigraha and alaukika vigraha laukika vigraha refers to the dissolution of the compounds using the words which are used in the usage by the speakers of the language alaukika vigraha refers to the same dissolution transformed into technical grammatical terminology we also stated that the beginning of the process of compounding is this particular alaukika vigraha and then several operations take place we have already studied some of them in the previous lecture we studied the purva pad karyas various purva pad karyas and before that we have studied the operations like subluk and also the samasanta pratyaya and before that we studied the purva pad nirdharana before that we studied the operations of naming the process as samasa and also the semantic conditioning let us study some more processes involved in the derivation of the samasa specifically the three types of samasas that are the focus of this particular course namely avyayi bhava bahuvrihi and dvandva there are three operations that we shall study in this particular lecture there are two varna karyas the first one is the sandhi and the second one is the uttara pad rasv the shortening in the uttara pad and the third important operation is related with the gender of the compound or the samasa let us study these three operations one by one let us take up varna karya or sandhi for our study varna karya or the phonological operations are the operations that are based on individual sounds however the environment is that of compounding and this varna karya is also known as sandhi the place to do this sandhi is generally towards the end of the derivation process and the outputs of these operations generally do not become inputs to any other further operations i repeat these operations of sandhi are done towards the end of the derivation process and the outputs of these operations generally do not become inputs to any other further operations in the samasa samhita is obligatory and samhita is defined in the paninian grammar as parasannikarshah the extreme proximity of two sounds is what is samhita since samasa is the process of merging two units together to form one unit both the units are uttered in close proximity extreme proximity so samhita is obligatory in a samasa in the sentence the samhita is dependent on the desire of the speaker as it said in the traditional sources what it means is that in the sentence two others which are although semantically related but they are independent and separate in nature so they could be uttered in samhita mode with close proximity or they could be uttered 
without the Samhita mode. It depends on how the speaker wants to speak, what is the desire of the speaker at that point in time. But in Samasa, Samhita is obligatory. So, the Sandhi, which is based on Samhita, is also obligatory in the Samasa. This is a by default position, with obviously a few exceptions noted down in the Parimian grammar. And such a sutra mentions optionality in the sutra. We have a very famous verse in the Paninian grammatical tradition which reads like the following Samhita ekapade nitya, nitya dhatu pasarga yoho, nitya samase, vakyetu savibaksham apekshate. What this means is that Samhita ekapade nitya, ekapade samhita nitya, dhatu pasarga yoho, samhita nitya, samase samhita nitya. Vakyetu sa samhita vivaksham apekshate. What it means is, samhita is obligatory within one pada. Samhita is obligatory in between the verbal root and the preverb, and samhita is also obligatory within a compound. In the sentence, however, it expects the desire of the speaker. This is the literal translation of this particular verse. In this verse, certain conditions are stated where Samhita is obligatory. Amongst them, Samasa is one such condition and therefore we always do Samhita and the result of the Samhita is the Sandhi which is always done in a samasa. But as we said, this is done towards the very end of the entire process. And once this is done, generally no other sutra applies. So the sandhi does not become the input for the other sutras to apply. Now here is an example of a bahuvrihi samasa. The meaning to be conveyed is one who has immeasurable luster. Amita abha yasya saha. This is the laukika vigraha, and the alaukika vigraha would be Amita plus su plus abha plus su. Remember that Amita as well as abha, both these words are infeminine with the suffix a added in both to the words amita which is the root word amita and abha and so amita plus a is amita abha plus a is abha now we have amita plus su and abha plus su and then a very important process of subluk takes place and so we have Amita plus 0 plus Abha plus 0 and so then the Pummad Bhava operation on the Purvapada takes place after the Sutra 6334 applies namely Striya Pummata Bhashita Pumska Danung Samanadhikarane Striyam Apurani Priyadishu this applies and then it substitutes the root form of Amita in place of it. That root form is Amita. So we have Amita plus 0 plus Abha plus 0. And then there is also the shortening of the Uttarapada and that reduces Abha 
to Abha. So we have Amita plus 0 plus Abha plus 0. And now at the final stage we have Amita plus Abha where A coming at the end of Amita and A coming at the beginning of Abha, they both come in close proximity namely Samhita and then in this Samhita the Sutra 61101 namely Akasavarane Dirghaha applies and in place of both these vowels substitutes the long vowel and so we have the finally derived compound form Amitabha. A and A are substituted by their long vowel. This is the resultant form of the Sandhi. This is how Sandhi operations happen in the Samasa. Sandhi is obligatory. It is not possible in the Samasa to say Amita Abha without doing the Sandhi. This is not possible. In the Samasa, one will have to do the Sandhi and one will have to say Amitabha. This is an extremely important feature of Samasa. Let us take another example. The meaning is the direction between east and north. So we have Purvasyaha Uttarasyascha Dishur Yad Antaralam Purvasyaha Uttarasyaha Cha Dishur Yad Antaralam So the Sutra Dingnamanyantarale prescribes this particular Samasa which is a Bahurihi Samasa and so we have Purva plus Ngas plus Uttara plus Ngas as the Alaukika Vigraha Vakya and now here 2471 Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and so both the subs get deleted and so now we have Purva plus 0 plus Uttara plus 0. <coughs> Now we have Purva plus Uttara. Now in this Samasa, the two constituents are such that the Purvapada is ending in A and the Uttarapada begins with U. Now both these words are uttered in Samhita mode. That means they are in close proximity. In this condition, the Sandhi has to happen. So six one. 87 applies, the Guna Sandhi happens and we have Purv, O and Tara and finally we get Purvottara as the resultant compound output. Since this is a Samasa, we cannot have Purva and Uttara as the finally derived output. It has to be one where the Varanakarya in the form of Sandhi has already taken place. Let us take one more example and this is the example of the Avyayi Bhava Samasa. So when the meaning is towards fire, we have Agnim Abhi as the Laukika Vigraha Vakya and so the Alaukika Vigraha would be Abhi plus Su plus Agni plus Am. Abhi plus Su plus Agni plus Am. Now, here we have the Sutra Lakshanena Abhiprati Abhimukhe applying and therefore this Samasa takes place and now Abhi occupies the first position in the Samasa. After that, Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho 2471 applies and both the sups namely Su and Am they get deleted. So we have Abhi plus 0 plus Agni plus 0. And now when we join Abhi and Agni together we note that 
The word abhi is such that it ends in e, followed immediately by the uttara pada which begins with a another vowel. In this case, the environment for the application of the Sandhi Sutra 6177 Iko Yanachi is fulfilled and so Iko Yanachi takes place and Abhi is now modified to Abhya and then finally we get the derived form Abhyagni. Since this is a Samasa, Samhita is obligatory and so we cannot have the finally derived output as Abhi Agni. This is not possible. There has to be a Sandhi, so we will have Abhyagni as the output and this will be done only towards the end of the derivation process of the Samasa. Let us take the example of Dvandva Samasa. When the meaning is Krishna and Arjuna together, Krishnaha, Arjunaha, Cha, this is the Laukika Vigraha Vakya. And so the Alaukika Vigraha would be Krishna plus Su plus Arjuna plus Su. Now we have Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applying because the Samasa Saudhnya takes place at this particular stage. So Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place. So Su and Su, both of them are now part of the Pratipadika. So Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies. And so we get Krishna plus zero plus Arjuna plus zero. Then we join Krishna and Arjuna. And because this is a Samasa, both the words are in the Samhita mode, so they are in close proximity and the condition is such that the word Krishna ends in short A followed by the word Arjuna which begins with short A. Now in the condition of Samhita, when two such vowels come in close proximity, the Sutra 61101 applies and substitutes the long vowel and therefore we have the finally derived output namely Krishna Arjuna where a and a are substituted by their long version a. Since this is a samasa we cannot have Krishna and Arjuna as the finally derived output. We will have the output in the Samhita mode and so Sandhi has to be done. Krishna Arjuna is the finally derived Samasa output after having done the Varnakarya in the form of Sandhi. These are some of the operations that happen in the derivation of the Samasa. We have studied them in some detail, we have also explained some idea, some philosophy behind these operations and we have also stated the place where these operations take place. Now there is one more Varnakarya remaining which is Uttarapada Rasva. This is an operation that takes place on the final sound of the Uttarapada. This operation is that of shortening. All the operations that we have seen so far they were related to the Purvapada this Varnakarya, however, refers to the Uttarapada Rasva which occurs at the end of the Uttarapada. So, a long vowel at the end of the Uttarapada 
is shortened. That is what this operation is with some specific environments in place like neuter gender as well as uttarapada being subordinate. So when the samasa is in neuter gender, the shortening of the final vowel is stated by the sutra rasvo napumsake pratipadikasya 1.247 of the ashtadhyayi. And when the uttarapada is subordinate, the uttarapada rasva, the shortening of the final vowel of the uttarapada is stated by this particular sutra Gostriya Rupa Sarjanasya 1.248. The feminine suffix and the word go which are part of a subordinate word are shortened. That is the meaning of this particular sutra. Rasvo Napumsake Pratipadikasya is self-evident. It means the Pratipadika which is in the neuter gender, its final vowel is shortened. Now this particular rule goes through your Upasarjanasya means the feminine suffix and the word go which are part of a subordinate word are shortened. This rule operates in a specific environment of a compound where meanings of both the Purvapada as well as Uttarapada become subordinate to some other meaning. And that other meaning lies out of the compound. And so obviously, Pahuvrihi Samasa is the example of this particular sutra. Let us take an example. When the meaning is, one who has obtained knowledge or learning, the Laukika Vigraha is Prapta Vidya Yenasaha. And the Alaukika Vigraha would be Prapta plus Su plus Vidya plus Su. Now here the Samasa Saudhnya takes place. So Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place. So both the Su's now are part of the Pratipadika. So now Sopodhatu Pratipadika Yoho 2471 applies and therefore both the Su's are deleted. So we have Prapta plus 0 plus Vidya plus 0. After which the Pumad Bhava operation on the Purvapada takes place by the application of the Sutra Striya Pumat Bhashita Pumska Danong Samanadhi Karane Striyam Apurani Priyadishu 6334. So we have Prapta modified to Prapta and Vidya. Now because this is a Bahurihi Samasa, both the Purvapada as well as the Uttarapada, they are semantically subordinate to something outside of this particular compound. So now since Uttarapada is subordinate, is Upasarjana, this Uttarapada has its long vowel at the end shortened by the Sutra Gostriya Rupasarjanasya 1248. And so we have Vidya modified as Vidya. And so the output generated of this particular process is Prapta Vidya. The input was Prapta Vidya Yenasaha and the output is Prapta Vidya with the Uttarapada Rasva happening by the application of the Sutra Gostriya Rupasarjanasya. We revisit the same example that we saw earlier, but we focus on the Uttarapada Rasva now. So we have Amita Abhayasya Saha as the Laukika Vigraha, which means one who has immeasurable luster. Now we have Amita plus Su plus Abha plus Su as the Alaukika Vigraha 
so samasa saudhnya takes place so pratipadika saudhnya takes place now we have both the sus which are part of the pratipadika so now supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and deletes both the sus so we have amita plus 0 plus abha plus 0 then the pummad bhava operation on the purva pada happens because of 6 3 34 so we have amita plus 0 plus abha plus 0 now since this is a bahuvrihi samasa purva pada as well as the uttara pada are semantically subordinate to some other meaning out of this compound since the uttara pada is subordinate upasarjana the sutra gostriya upasarjana applies and abha which has a at the end which is a long vowel is shortened and we have abha as the resultant output of the next stage in the derivation so we have amita abha and then the sandhi rule applies and then we get the output generated as amitabha this is how uttarapada raspa takes place this is the example of the varana karya now after having studied these operations let us look at the discussion on the gender of the compound in the dvandva compound the gender of the compound is determined by the gender of the Uttarapada. This is stated by the Sutra Paravallingam Dvandva Tatpurusha Yoho 2.4.26 of the Ashtadhyayi. And this says that the gender of the Dvandva Samasa as well as the Tatpurusha Samasa is determined by the Para element that is Uttarapada in the samasa so for example if we have kukkutaha mayuricha kukkuta is masculine gender and mayuri is feminine gender if we do the dvandva compound of these two padas the dvandva output would be kukkuta mayuri and the gender of this samasa would be the gender of the uttara pada namely mayuri that is feminine and so we'll get the forms like kukkuta mayuriya etc but if we change the order and put kukkuta as the uttara pada and so we have mayuri kukkuta as the output the gender of this compound will be determined by the gender of the uttara pada which is kukkuta which is masculine and so this compound will be in masculine gender so we'll get the declension mayuri kukkutau etc the gender of the avyayi bhava compound is by default neuter this is stated by the sutra avyayi bhavascha that is 2.4.18 so if we have the laukika vigraha kumarasya samipam the samasa form would be upakumara and it will be in neuter gender and so we will have upakumaram similarly if we have the laukika vigraha striyam the samasa output would be adhistri and this will be in neuter if we have the laukika vigraha gangamanu the samasa output would be anugangam anuganga and this will be in neuter so we have anugangam since the bahuvrihi samasa is by default a visheshana a qualification its gender is determined by the gender of the visheshya as is the general rule in sanskrit so now if we have the laukika vigraha prapta vidya yena saha this saha is the head so the gender of the compound prapta vidya would be masculine so we have prapta vidya in the second vigraha 
sa is the head feminine so the gender of the compound prapta vidya will be also feminine so we'll have prapta vidya and tat in the third vigraha is in neuter so the gender of the compound prapta vidya will be neuter and so the compound form in the declined form would be prapta vidyam these are extremely important points to remember as far as these three types of samasas are concerned as we shall study them in detail now to summarize operations based on individual sounds are done at a later stage at the end of the process of the derivation of the compound they give the final shape of the word form of the compound and denote one merged meaning realizing aikapadya as well as aikarthya the grammatical gender of the compounds is determined in different manners for each of the compounds these are the texts referred to thank you